Well, welcome. Today I thought I would derive the rotational inertia of a solid cylinder that has a uniform dan uh, mass density. Now, um, I've already derived the rotational inertia for a disc, but um, this one is for a cylinder. It turns out they both give you the same answer. They're going to get the I for a disc in case you, this is all you want to know and you don't want to go through the derivation. The answer to this um, rotational inertia of a solid cylinder is that I is equal to one half the mass of the cylinder times R squared. That's when the, the axis is through the center of the, of the um, cylinder. So there you have it. Okay, so once again, the way we're going to start off doing this is we're going to um, use this basic equation for rotational inertia. So, um, so the rotational inertia for its point masses that are known distances from an axis is just you just multi you take um, m1 times how far that is from the axis squared plus m2 times how far it is from the axis squared times m3 plus m3 times how far it is from the axis squared you just add them together that's assuming that the rod itself has negligible mass okay so um, for a cylinder though it's a little bit more complex than that because see how the mass is all um, spread out in space so there's not a point mass it's the different different amounts of this mass is different has different distances from the axis so our axis is right through the center and um, for this so we're going to need some some integration to figure out how to how to do this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, choose um, a hollow cylinder so I'm going to draw a hollow cylinder um, that has a very, very thin wall. And uh, this is going to have a thin wall of dr. That's going to be the thickness of the thin wall. So there it is. And the reason I'm choosing this one is because um, all the mass all this mass is a very particular distance away from the axis, so it's all a distance little r from the axis. Again, um, we don't, you know, you might be wondering, like, do you mean that the distance little r is to the to the inside of the wall or to the out, outer side of the wall? And it turns out that if this is dr thin, if that's dr thin, meaning infinitesimally thin, then it doesn't matter um, which one we're talking about since dr is um, going to go to zero. It doesn't matter which if we go to the inside or outside of the wall. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find um, the rotational inertia of just this thin walled cylinder. So just this mass, how much rotational inertia is from due to just this mass in here? Okay, well that's going to be a very tiny rotational inertia because this mass is so little. The reason this mass is so little is because um, the, it's such a thin wall that there's hardly any mass there. So I'm going to say that the, the rotational inertia is really tiny, di tiny, meaning infinitesimally tiny. And that's because the mass of this, cyl of this cylinder is dm. And again, it's dm because it's such a little, it's such a little thickness. So it'd be dm times how far you are from the axis squared. So that's r squared. All right. So that's um, that's the rotational inertia, just inertia, just of the of the thin walled cylinder there. Okay. To get the total rotational inertia of all of the the cylinder, that's going to be a large rotational inertia. I'm just going to sum up all the little dm r squareds. I'll switch these so that my differential is on the in the back there. Okay, now I have a problem with with doing this. My dm right here is not in terms of my variable. The variable is r. See how if you go to different um, different radii for the thin walled cylinders, you see how when you do that the r changes well so that r is a variable but i'd like this dm to be in terms of that variable so then the trick goes like this you say um, you're going to say the density of this 
It's uniform density. It's the mass over the volume. Now the volume of a cylinder is the total mass divided by the total volume. The volume of a cylinder is just going to be the area, the cross-sectional area, times the height. Let's call this height H. So it's going to be um, the area, um, pi r squared, times the height, h. Okay, so that's, um, that's the density of the cylinder. But that's also the density of the thin-walled cylinder. So that's going to be, um, the mass of that is just dm. So that's my dm. And now, um, to get this volume, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take in, a, in your mind, can you cut this, make, like, cut this right here and roll it out. And if you roll that out right there, you're going to get something that looks like this. Perfect. So... Have it go like that. Okay, so what is that volume? Well, that volume is um, we got an H, we got um, uh, this this dimension is two pi little r, and then this dimension right here is dr. So it would just be length times width times height. So that's going to be the length. Uh, let's say H times two pi r times um, dr. See how that's a that's a volume now, length times width times height, or whatever, whatever dimensions you want to give it. It's just the three dimensions multiplied by each other. All right, so I'm going to solve this now for dm, and I'm going to put it in that equation, and I'm going to take the integral, and I'm going to be done. So uh, let's get rid of a pi. Um, let's get rid of the h. Um, oh, you know, I'm doing something wrong here. Yeah, this is no longer equal to density. So do you mind, I'm sorry about that. I'm going to get rid of this density so because that's not density anymore. When, once I start canceling things out, I can't say that that's equal to density anymore. Okay, so let's just say that um, we set these two equal to each other. And then, um, so now I'm solving for dm. Apparently dm is equal to... Um, m2 times m times r times dr all over r squared. Okay, let me go ahead and plug that into here. So i is equal to r squared and dm is this stuff, 2m r dr over r squared. We have to tell the integral when to start adding and when to stop adding. And that's got to be in terms of um, r because my differential is dr. So I'm going to say start adding it, start adding these these rotational inertias up at zero when r equals zero and don't stop adding till you get to r equals capital R. Okay, everything else is ready to go. We just got to, let's pull out all the constants out of this integral. So I is equal to, now pulling out all the constants, I got um, 2m over r squared. And then I got this integral is going to be r cubed dr from 0 to capital R. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, take that integral then. So i is equal to um, 2m over r squared. And then the, the integral is going to be r to the fourth power over 4. And that's going to be from 0 to r. Okay, if we sub in... And I get a little more real estate down here. If I sub in the, the capital R first, and then um, I subtract, when I get done with that, I'm going to sub in the zero, sub, subtracting that. So I'm going to get, I'll put it down here. So it's going to be I is equal to 2M over R squared. And then it's going to be this in here, it's going to be R to the fourth 
over 4, capital R to the 4th over 4, minus, now put in 0, 0 to the 4th over 4. And now I just have to simplify. So simplifying that a little bit then, it's going to be, um, let's see, we can get rid of um, this term right there. And um, that 2 and the 4 is going to go to a half. And the r to the 4th um, divided by r squared is going to be r squared. So it's going to be 1 half m r squared. And so that's our final equation. Okay, so see how the h canceled out. So it doesn't, the fact that this has some dimension now, it's not just a, it's not just a disc, but it's a cylinder. Um, it doesn't matter how, how tall the cylinder is, how tall the cylinder is, it's still going to just be one half times m r squared. All right. Well, thank you.